Welcome to episode 74 of the Wayward Skein podcast. My name is Lynn, and this is Friday, April 7th. It's Good Friday, so happy Easter to those who celebrate. Hag Samaya to everyone who's celebrating Passover. Uh, I think it's still Ramadan, so um, Ramadan Mubarak to those who celebrate that. And I'm not sure what else is going on in the world right now. Um, so yeah, it's been a hot minute. Um, I was Honestly, I've been putting off recording because I was hoping to finish this first. And I didn't. Um, <sighs> trip got postponed slightly. Um, and I knew it wasn't going to be cold enough for my partner to actually wear these by the time he got them. So I kind of lost my motivation when I got on Finger Island. Because Finger Island is a lot like Sleeve Island. These teeny tiny little fingers take a lot longer than you think they would. But anyway. So that's why I haven't recorded in quite some time. But I was like, okay, you know what? I've got some free time. I'm not going to finish the gloves this weekend. I might, but I probably won't. Um, I just wanted to finally get this done. And I'm going to put my show notes where I can actually see them. Because they're like back here. So, because they're on another computer. I have two screens behind the one you guys are sitting on, the one I'm seeing you on. There's another one here. And there's a laptop underneath the one that I'm recording on. <laughs> there's a lot of computers on this desk. I am in the process of reorganizing a little bit. I'm starting to clean out my daughter's bedroom so that I can move my office set up in there. But more importantly, that bed frame right there, that big stack of wood that's in my closet that makes my closet inaccessible, that's going away. I bought a new bed frame. So... Um, Yeah, we picked out a new bed frame uh, about a week and a half ago. It, uh, once I've got most of the office stuff into the other bedroom, then I'll be able to set up the bed frame and so on and so forth. So yeah, new bed, yay. Uh, That one, I'm going to attempt to use the wood because it's all real wood. And I'm gonna attempt to reclaim the wood to build a shelf across the base of my front closet to put my recycle bins underneath. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, It doesn't look that complicated from what I've been seeing online. I do know how to use power tools. I know how to find studs and, you know, anchor screws properly into proper woodwork and so on and so forth. So I'm not completely without knowledge. I've just never tried to do it. So um, my son's going to help me. It'll be fine. If it doesn't work out, big deal. We throw at the wood. No big deal. 
I may have to patch a few holes in the closet. Big deal. But anyway, that's where that big pile of wood is going. And then I can take those closet drawers and they will go. And then I can start doing something with that closet. What a thought actually using my space. <laughs> okay, so I have actually finished something. I finished. I haven't blocked it yet, which is why it's folded up like this, because this is the, the only way it looks flat. So I finished my house scarf. We're not mentioning the name. <laughs> so I finished it. It is, I used up almost all of the red, but I still have all this of the uh, buttercup. Is it buttercup? Yes, it's buttercup. So I still have a teeny little thing of the red. So I'm thinking I might make a small pair of fingerless mitts to go with it. Um, this is likely either going to go up to my cousin, who is a huge Harry Potter freak, or it's going to go to the Etsy shop. One or the other. I'll let you guys know. Uh, but I finished it. It's a fairly good size. Oh, my stitch marker is still there. So this is what I got done after. You guys saw it last, and I'll take that off so I don't forget it, because I will forget it. And then I will end up washing my stitch marker and giving it away. So there we go. It is... A decent length. It is long enough to, to wrap around your neck. Of course, my hair is in the way. But um, so it's a decent length. Um, it will block out a little bit longer than it looks now. So I think I probably get another 8, 10 inches out of it if I block it properly. Um, it was my own, like, a, it's not really a design. I did, garter, I did stockinette stitch with the garter edge. That's it. 16 rows of each color. Eight rows of uh, garter at e either end. And that's it. Just went. It is knit out of Barocco Remix, which is a lovely yarn made of rec reclaimed fibers. It has a bunch of different fibers in it. It's got linen. It's got silk. It's got cotton. It's got wool. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. It's lovely stuff. Um, it's very soft. Very soft. There are prickly bits from the silk. I think it's from the silk because my... my um, my other scarf has these little picky bits in it too, and it's silk. Uh, so I'm thinking it's from the silk, but it's, uh, it is very soft against the skin. Like I would have no problem wearing this, but I don't wear scarves. I don't like having things around my neck. So <laughs> every time I knit a scarf or a cowl, I'm like, why am I doing this? Because I'm not going to wear it, but I, I just give everything away. It's fine. Almost all my knitting gets gifted. So uh, that is my only finished object. And uh, so, yeah, I think I'm going to use the leftovers to make some fingerless mitts. I just want to do like the top ribbing and the bottom ribbing in the red if I have enough. Maybe just the top ribbing to show the color. And the rest will be out of this. I, I'm pretty sure I have enough of the... Oh, right, I had started it. That's why the yarn is stuck. Because I had started it and these needles are way too big. It is not. It is the needles that she called for in the pattern. The um, Sorry, I did actually find a pattern that I was going to use. They are called the Vanilla Fingerless Mitts by Claudia Donnelly Designs. Um, that's what I'm going to try to make. But the needles that they call for a size 8 are way too big for this. So I'm going to scooch down to a size 7. And I'm actually going to frog this while you're watching. Because it's been sitting on my desk and I've been meaning to frog it. And now it's all cut up in the yarn for the gloves. Like really caught up in it. There we go. Uh, nope, still caught. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm not a professional. <laughs> you all know that by now. So uh, yeah, I think I have enough to do at least the top, the, one of the cuffs, like one of the either the top or the bottom ribbing in this, but they're like, there's a fair bit left. Like there's been almost 10 grams of this. So I should have enough. If not, it's no big deal. I can do the, I'm going to do, I'm going to start the second one before I finish the first one. Thoughts, try to get the thought out in one complete sentence. So I'm going to try to do the bottom ribbing on both and then the body and then see if I have enough to do top cuffs in both. Um, so I guess I'm going to measure, I'm going to weigh the ball before I start the first cuff and then see if I have enough for three more. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that. That's going to be started very, very soon because as soon as I'm done with the gloves, I'm starting that. So that's my only finished object. Yoink! Um, I have not yet finished the gloves. Haven't. Close. Very close. 
Sorry, I'm just going to pull the other one out. So this is the right glove. Sorry, I'll just put that on so you can see it a little bit better. This is the right glove. Of, and you can see the cables there on the top of the, the wrist. And this is the left glove. And I only have one finger done so far. One and a half. My arms are a little bit fat for these. His arms aren't this big. Um, so yeah, you can, the cables are beautiful. If you'll recall, the last time I recorded, I had to rip out what I had done with this one and start over because I had dropped a couple of stitches in the middle of the, the cabling and I couldn't retrieve it. I couldn't fix it. So I had to rip all the way back down and re-knit the whole thing. Um, so I have... Sorry, there's a bit of a pulled stitch on the top of the uh, middle finger here, but I'll be able to cinch that in. So I have three and a half, well, two, two and a half fingers and a thumb left. Uh, they really don't take that long. It's just boring, so I don't really sit down to do them. Uh, but they're almost done. These are the Naughty, Naughty or Knotted, sorry, I lost my show notes. Uh, the Naughty Gloves by Julia Mueller. I did the Mittens, who are by somebody else, Tessa Rexford, I think did the, the mitten uh, pattern based on this um, for myself a couple of years ago out of some yarn that Kate from Hawthorne Cottage Craft had sent me. Um, but I, he wanted gloves. He doesn't do mittens. And he works outside a lot. So I wanted him to have something to keep his hands warm when he was like going in and out and in and out and in and out at work. Um, but obviously that season is gone now. <laughs> it's warm now. And uh, where he lives, it's especially warm, so um, he's not going to need them this year. So I was not super motivated to get these done really quickly, plus it's going to be a couple of weeks before I see them yet. So, um, yeah, they're not finished, but they will be soon, and you will see them before they're finished. The, the, the fingers all look a little wonky because his hands are a little bit longer than mine, so I made the fingers longer than they need to be for mine, and I think I made this one a little too long either way. Uh, but you know what? They're homemade. And he's very happy with them, so he thinks they're awesome. And the fact that, you know, I made them intentionally for him makes them special. So um, it'll, I'm trying to pull these off without stretching the finger too far. I shouldn't have put this one on. Because they are a little tight on my really chunky forearms. His forearms are not that. <laughs> But anyway, so I'm getting there, slowly, but surely. They will be finished before the next podcast. I am determined because I want to finish them this weekend. I was supposed to be seeing him this weekend, but that didn't work out. So it's a holiday weekend. It's tricky. Um, so what else have I been working on? Ooh, I made a lot of progress on this. So this is my... Um, Mitered square blanket. I was here last time you saw it. So I finished the whole third row and I did the whole fourth row and have one square done on row five. It's going to be nine rows. Rows? Rows. Rows are horizontal columns or vertical. So it's going to be nine rows. So I'm up to row five. I was on row three last time you saw it. And these are all scraps. Um, the purple, I think, is from a sweater I knit my son when he was a kid. This is from, uh, this is actually Bernat Satin Ombres uh, that somebody gave me a huge, huge bag. I think I bought a bag of millens of this at one point. This is what's left. Uh, this is leftovers from my friend Dara. This is some um, Rossetti. I don't remember the name of the base, but it's Rossetti uh, acrylic yarn um, from Italy that I bought a bunch of balls of. I have four or five balls left. This is just a random red acrylic that I have lying around. This was, um, I made a hat and a scarf for an ex of mine out of this. It's um, patents, either Canadian or decor. Um, the yellow is just some random acrylic. This is uh, another either patents Canadiana or decor that I bought when I first started learning to knit. This was from my friend Dara. This is from my mom's stash. Uh, this is from my sister-in-law's mom's stash. Um, this is a huge ball of, it's this stuff, Bernat Super Value that somebody donated to me at one point. 
some random white acrylic I think from Dara. This is some James C. Brett. Has something to do with Peter Pan. I don't remember the name of it. But it's this gorgeous uh, variegated blue, tealy blue. Um, this is from my mom's stash. This is from my mom's stash. The brown is... Um, is this Patton's Canadiana? It's whichever one does not have wool in it. Uh, I made my son a sweater out of this a long time ago. So this is leftovers from his sweater. And this is more of that, this stuff that I bought myself a Milan bag of. And it's it's really gaudy, awful colors. Like it's pastel primary colors, but it's, it's awful looking stuff. <laughs> like knitting a sweater or a baby blanket in that would be, well, but little squares, it's fine. So that's what I'm using it for. So I got oh, quite a lot done on this. This is going to be a Project Linus blanket. So it's going to be going to uh, Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario when it's finished. I have a couple more lying around that are also going to go to them. Um, basically, when I, I like having something that I can just pick up and knit a full piece of in like 20 minutes. And this is about how long it takes me to knit one of these squares. So it's faster than my mitered square blanket, which I'm going to show you next. Um, and it's getting rid of all my acrylic stash, so win-win. So I'm working on that. I'm probably going to try to finish that maybe by the end of the month. I'm not stressing about it whenever I have a few minutes to knit and I want to pick something up. That's what I pick up unless I'm, I have a little more knitting time. Um, so that one I started on December 6th of 2019. Uh, it's on two, no it's not. I started it on February 13th, sorry, <laughs> of this year. February, 20th, uh, February 13th of this year. Sorry, I'm getting buzzed here. Um, so that's that one. Uh, my other mitered square blanket. Which I'm going to try not to knock the camera down. It's right here. And where about am I on this one? Oh, here. So I was here. I've only added four squares. Um, I've been a little bit lazy. I've been working on everything else but this. I've really been trying to push getting the glove finished. So this is um, Fiber Stash Dye Works Twinkle Toes. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the, the Stelina in it or the whatever. Nah, it's not showing up at all. The lights aren't right. Um, it is actually still fairly light outside, which you can see at the bottom there, but it's starting. It, twi twilight has started. Um, so it is her Twinkle Toes base in Great Scott. Um, this one is the charcoal so this is and there goes a bunch of stuff off my desk because <laughs> i was trying to get socks out from underneath so these are also my partner's socks um these were knit out of gnome gnome spun yarn puka sock base in the charcoal colorway so that's what the second square is uh, this one is actually from the Tangled Skein CA. It's from Sue's shop. Um, she had tried her hand at dyeing yarn a little while back, and this was one of the colors she did. It was a dark teal, and she had given me a square of that. And this is from my Evolution Pokemon mini skein set from... Sorry for the... From Teeny Button Studio. And she is still dyeing and selling, and this is the mini set. And these minis were huge. Because I still have four grams of that mini left. They're not quite ten grams, but they're definitely big enough for me to get two squares out of. Sorry for the complaint. I really hate that cellophane stuff for that. Uh, so that's what this one is. And it's a really pretty, like they don't have individual color names, but that's from that mini set. So I only got four squares in. But it is coming along. Like it is getting pretty big. And I still love it very much. So that is, sorry, I'm just checking stuff off my list. <laughs> I really shouldn't do that while I'm talking to you guys. So that's, um, it lives on my desk and it, I pick it up whenever I feel like putting a square in. But lately I've been working on the, the bigger one, the, the worsted weight one, um, a little bit more because I want to get it finished and out because it is really reducing my acrylic stash. I have a big bin of acrylic that used to live on that shelf, but now it's like sitting down here so that I can pick out of it. Um, and when I am done, almost done with the color, it ends up here. <laughs> so actually, one of the most recent squares I did, one of the last ones I did was this black that was one of Dara's yarns. And uh, the leftovers ended up in my magic ball. And I have a soft yarn one too for my other. 
but the, the worsted one is growing much, much faster. And the worsted one is probably going to end up being um, either a um, basic dishcloth style blanket, just really big basic dishcloth, <laughs> and, or it's going to end up being a 10-stitch blanket or something of that sort. Uh, so this mitered square blanket, whoops, not that one, this one. <laughs> Too many things. This one was started in December of 2019 after my original blanket got destroyed. Um, accidentally, I had left it in a plastic grocery bag, which I should never ever do. And my kids were helping clean the house one day, and my son just picked up the whole bag and threw it away and didn't even look inside to see what it was. In his defense, there was a bag of apples underneath the bag that some of them had started to go, so he just picked up the whole thing and threw it all out. And that's how I lost my first spider square blanket, which was ginormous, and I miss it so. But there we are. That's what happens when you don't put your stuff away, right, Mom? <laughs> so I didn't put my stuff away, and I lost it. Uh, so this one was started in December 2019, on December 6th, and it is done on 2.75 millimeter needles, which is our US 2, and I use my Haya Haya Sharps for that because I love them so. Uh, for my big miter square blanket, I'm using my Knitter's Pride Carbon, uh, Marbles, Marbles, Knitter's Pride or Knit Pro? Knitter's Pride, I think. Marbles. Uh, these are absolutely fantastic for lasting needles. Look at how pointy those are. They are like super pointy for plastic needles. It's great. I love them. And those were st sent to me by Stephanie at Stitchcraft Marketing. I don't think Stitchcraft Marketing still exists, and Stephanie doesn't work there in any case. But that's where I got them. <laughs> so those are my works in progress. Um, oh, so yeah, these, sorry, the gloves are done on 2.5 millimeter needles, which is a US 1.5. And, and they were started on December 20th of 2020. Sorry, I've got other things lying around that are getting caught. Um, so I have a couple of immediate plans. You guys already know. I was talking about doing the dot sweater by Pernille, or Pernille Larson. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Um, yeah, that's cut my toe. It feels weird. Uh, it's the, it's the dot sweater for kids by Pernille Larson. So I am doing it in Red Heart Comfort Sport in black. Sorry, I have the yarns right Nope, that bag moved. Poop. I had them right here in a bag. Oh, right there. Sorry. The bag migrated to the bed. So I have this ginormous ball. A Red Heart Comfort Sport that was, uh, it belonged to my sister-in-law's mom. Because all, all my nieces, all my nibblings are getting sweaters from Nana's yard. Um, my youngest niece, you saw her sweater a little while back. Um, this was my middle niece's sweater. So it is being done out of that black and this Bernat Junior Jackards in this crazy, vibrant, super bright colorway. That's pinks and blues and greens, and I just love it. And that's going to be the polka dots and the dot sweater on the black background. So um, I've, 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 I've started it, but technically, like, I've only just barely started the neck ribbing. So really... How far have I gotten? This far. <laughs> and there's a long strand of yarn that goes across the bedroom for this, so I'm going to have to pick it up and I'll clean it all up and pick all my hair out of it. Fortunately, the cat doesn't hang out in here, so there's no cat hair in it, but my hair's in it because I hang out in here and I have a lot of hair. Uh, so I did start it. It is on... Um, Four millimeter needles, which is US six, and I think a five millimeter needle, which is US eight. So I think it's on those two. Um, don't quote me because I didn't put it in the show notes. Oops. Um, so that is one of the things that I want to start as soon as I'm done the gloves. And the other thing was, as I mentioned, the vanilla fingerless mitts by Claudia Donnelly Designs. Um, and those are going to be done in the Baroque remix that is left over from the house scarf. So um, I just need to find the rest of these BPNs <laughs> or the other set of sevens I know I have lying around somewhere. I know where those are. They're in the other half of the closet because I have a box full of my um, double pointed needles and they're in there. So now that I'm thinking about that, I'll go grab them as soon as I'm done with you guys. So that is all the knitting. 
Um, I'm still looking at reviving the school at Play Scarf, which is in a bag somewhere in this mess. I'm pretty sure they're behind the screen, so I'm not going to try to grab it right now. I am going to start working on that again. I just um, I need to get a few things off my desk first uh, before I pick that up because that one is a charted um, lace design and I need to pay attention to the charts. So I'm going to try to scan it at work because I have the book on my bed over there. I'm going to bring it to work, scan it so that I can have it on the screen because I find that easier to follow along. Um, one thing I discovered the other day though, I'm just going to grab it real quick. I had it right here. had it right here. Oh well, I can't see it now. Uh, I bought some colored washi tapes. They're in blues and greens and stuff like that. They make amazing highlighter tape. You know that really expensive highlighter tape that you can get at like yarn stores and festivals and stuff? 99 cent roll of washi tape. Same thing. Save yourself some money. Buy some washi tape. <laughs> it's the thin stuff that I bought and it just perfectly covers one line of the chart and at least the chart that I was working on for the gloves which is fairly, fairly narrow. Um, but if you want to do some wider stuff, you could just do it under the line that you're working or above the line you're working. So it just highlights the, the line perfectly. But yeah, 99 cent washi tape, way cheaper than that highlighter tape. Way, way cheaper. Um, so the school play scarf is going to be brought back into rotation. But first I want to cast on these other two things because all the knitting mojo is back. <laughs> I'm also looking at doing a fragmentation shawl. But um, I'm actually talking with somebody about doing it as a booth sample in their yarn. So that is on pause for right now until they decide if they want to do that or not. Uh, if they don't, I'll just dig through my stash because I've got plenty of sock yarn in my stash. Um, and I'm sure I can come up with seven complementary colors. I'm sure I can. Um, so that is coming. I have been watching a lot of new podcasts. Um, <laughs> And not all the ones that I've been watching make it onto the list because if I watch a new podcast and I don't like it, I don't tell you guys about it. I apologize to the people whose podcasts I have not passed along. If I don't like it, I can't in all good conscience recommend it to other people. Um, there are a couple. One is a very, very famous designer who is now living in a foreign country in Europe. And I'm, I'm not talking about Franklin Habit. I love Franklin Habit to death. He just doesn't have a podcast. does have a Patreon, though, so you might want to check that out because he does do really cool videos for his Patreon patrons. Um, yeah, there is another very famous designer who lives in a European country now uh, who just recently started a podcast, and I watched the first episode. Words cannot express how badly I disliked this person. I've never met them. I don't know what their personality is like, but on the podcast, I could not stand them and wanted to throttle them. So when I have that kind of reaction to a podcast, I'm not going to name names because I don't need to do that. That would be rude. Um, I've never met the man. I don't know if he's nice or not. But yeah, I did not like that podcast at all. Um, there's also been a couple of other um, episodes that I've watched of other podcasts that have recently started that I was just like, eh, not for me. So those I don't pass along. I only pass along the ones that I enjoy, uh, which I feel is fair. I mean... Why would you recommend something you don't like to other people? And I'm not going to tell you which ones I don't like because that would be rude. And maybe, you know, just because I don't like it doesn't mean somebody else will, won't. Um, obviously, some of you like watching my podcast. Majority of people don't. <laughs> so <laughs> you never know what people are going to like or what they're going to dislike. But if I don't like it, I don't tell you guys about it. So to this week, I have five podcasts to tell you guys about. Um, it's been a hot minute, so I've watched a few. Uh, there is Therapy by Craft, who is Eunice in Southern California. She is lovely. She is funny. She is entertaining. She is educational. She's just a very relaxing and nice, like, she's a feel-good podcast. I really enjoy watching her. I get a lot of the same vibe from her as I get from um, Black Sheep Knitter, Sarah, in Madison, Wisconsin. So I very, very much enjoyed Eunice's podcast. I would recommend checking it out. She's put out three episodes so far, three or four. She just put one out yesterday. So um, yeah, definitely go check her out. Uh, the second one I watched was Pages and Pearls, who is Hannah, 
Um, I don't remember where Hannah is living. She's from Germany. I think she's living in New York. Maybe in New York. Um, but anyway, I really enjoyed hers as well. Um, she's very methodical in her approach to, to knitting. She's only been knitting for about two years, and she's very methodical, methodical in how she buys yarn, how she matches the yarn to patterns. Like, it's kind of how I wish I could be <laughs> with knitting um, and yarn acquisition and so on and so forth. But I'm not. <laughs> I'm really good at organizing other people. I'm really crappy at organizing myself. <laughs> Um, another one I watched, and I'm, I'll admit I'm a little on the fence about it, but I've only watched the one episode. So I watched Sweet Tea No Shade with Scott and John. And I kept feeling like it was very similar to Les Garçons, but not quite as, I didn't respond to them as much as I did to Maxim and, and Vesa. But I did very much, I did still enjoy it. They went on a long movie rant at the end of the episode that I loved because I'm super into movies and discussing them. And, and their, their, their whole best and worst movie of the year, every year for Oscar winners, I'm really enjoying that, that premise. And I, I can't wait to see what they do with it. But uh, they do a lot of talk about movies and uh, that I really enjoyed as well. Um, so that was a good one. And then I watched The Mindful Maker, who is Shanti from Australia. Um, she's basically living the life I wanted to be living in my 20s. <laughs> they do some farmsteading, some uh, homesteading, I mean. Uh, she does some, uh, she does a lot of fiber prep. She's actually done a, a whole video on fiber prep. Um, she does spinning, she does a whole like and she lives in sheep country so she makes friends with people who raise alpacas and have sheep farms and she gets fiber from them and she's like that so I'm you know working on making my our life sustainable and you know this is how I process my fiber and this is how I spin it and this is how I you know this is how I treat it when I intend to do this with it and like really amazing stuff and very very fun to watch I really enjoyed her and she does a lot of of um, recording outside as well, which is pretty cool for me because I've never been to Australia and it's different from here. So I like being able to see how other people live. Um, and the last one I've watched this week, I've only watched two episodes. She's got three episodes out. Uh, the first one was done over a year ago and then she started recording again about a month or two, uh, not quite a month ago. So she's got two new episodes out, episodes two and three. It is uh, Emerald Cottage Crafts podcast or crochet podcast. So she mostly crochets, but she does knit as well. Uh, and I find that kind of a, a bit of a refreshing switch for me because almost all the podcasts I watch concentrate on knitting. There are a few that do crochet as well, but most of them are knitting uh, related. So um, I watch the Emerald Cottage crochet podcast with Jill. And very interesting stuff. She's actually from an area of England that I've been to. So I really enjoyed watching her. Um, and that's all the new podcasts I have. So I have been tempted to watch a couple more. I really want to get into Earth Tones Girl. Um, just because I've heard so many awesome things about her. I've been hearing just about every podcast I've watched this week has mentioned Crea Bayonets. <laughs> which I've never watched and I've never seen it pop up. So I will seek it out because everybody is talking about her right now. And uh, I'm always in the market for a new podcast, although I am sort of starting to have trouble keeping up. <laughs> um, I, there are longer podcasts like um, Little Big Knits and um, what's her name? Wooly Worker and, uh, and um, Sarah, the uh, Black Sheep Knitter. Um, who do much, much longer episodes. And I have to watch those at one and a quarter times speed because I can't get through a whole episode. Otherwise, I have a very short attention span and I will, it will take me two or three days to get through a very long episode of something. Like I, I had to stop watching um, <sighs> The Bakery Bears. I had to, I love them. They are such lovely people. I adore them. I cannot sit there for two hours and listen to them talk about anything I, I, or travel or whatever. I, I can't. I do not have that attention span. I have difficulty watching a movie. Um, it usually takes me two or three days to get through a movie unless I'm watching it with someone. 
left to my own devices, there are some times where I can't get through an entire episode of a TV show. <laughs> so when we're having slow nights at work, and I have a lot of time between calls, I can usually get through an episode when it's longer. But if I'm just sitting here watching an episode and not, I don't have anything else occupying my time, my attention span is like, and that's nothing against the podcasters who are making these episodes. It's not to say the episodes are boring. It's to say that my brain just will not function that way. It's right now, uh, the last few months, I've been having a lot of trouble concentrating on stuff. And yeah, longer podcasts are one of the things that I've had to sacrifice a little bit. So unfortunately, bakery bears are one of the ones that I don't watch very much anymore. Um, Mina makes, I watch her shorter ones. I will try to watch her longer ones in chunks, but I find it very difficult. Uh, and it's it's solely my ability to process a long, uncut piece of entertainment. A and it's not you guys. I, I had the same problem with movies I really wanted to watch. It took me, I want to say three days to get through the second Doctor Strange movie. And I desperately wanted to see that. And it took me three days to get through it. <laughs> I'm not proud of myself, but what can I do? Um, so, yeah, I wasn't uh, I wasn't supposed to be around this weekend, but as I said, plans change. So, um, it's all good. We actually sort of had a mini Easter at my mom's house last weekend because I wasn't supposed to be here. I had bought these little plastic eggs um, at Chopper's Drug Mart that had temporary tattoos in them. So, no candy. I'm always usually pretty careful not to buy my brother's kids candy because I know that my mom's going to go overboard and buy them tons. So I don't have to buy them candy. I get to buy them fun stuff. So I bought them these, uh, these little plastic and I hid them all over the house. And I was like, there's 32, go to town. And the three kids just went ballistic. Like there's a five-year-old, a 10-year-old and a 12, 12 or 13. I think he's 13. So you'd think that maybe the five-year-old would really get into it, but the other two were super into it as well. And then they were like trading tattoos back and forth. My, the, my middle niece, the 10 year old was like, okay, I want this animal and that animal and you got to trade me for those animals. And I'm like, there's tons of each one. <laughs> you don't have to place such value on the tattoos. There are multiples of each one. <laughs> it's fine. Cause there were 16 eggs in each package. And I got two separate kinds of, of animal tattoos. One of them was realistic looking animals and one was cartoony animals. And so there were only 16 in, e in, in each package, but there were only four different types of tattoo in each package. So there, there were multiples of each one. <laughs> it, it got a little ugly at the end of the night, but they had a lot of fun searching for the eggs and then opening all the eggs to see what tattoos they got. Like, honestly, I never thought they were going to have this much fun with it. But uh, it, was, it was a big hit. So um, I told Mama, so we're going to keep the eggs for next year. And we'll put like little toys and stuff in them and do it again. <laughs> so we still had the eggs. Um, I kept all, I had the kids put them all back together and put them in a bag. And so that was also a fun activity because they were having a lot of fun mixing and matching the colors of the eggs. Because they all came out one solid color, but the kids were having fun mixing and matching them. So it was a little crazy. And uh, tomorrow we're, uh, what's today? Today's Friday. So tomorrow we're going to have Easter dinner at mom's, the proper Easter dinner where she just cooks the turkey and the whole bit. Um, I think I'm making something broccoli related as a side dish. Um, and we're just going to have Easter dinner and hopefully it'll be fairly low key. And Sunday I'm by myself. I'm debating flying to Toronto to hang out with a friend. So we shall see. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to pull it off. Um, so that's what I'm doing on Sunday as I'm flying to Toronto and visiting a friend. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, and then I'm Monday. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably going to work on Aaron's room a little bit more. Uh, that's what I'm doing tomorrow morning because I'm not working until one tomorrow. Oh, no. My mom's. I'm not working tomorrow. I'm off. <gasps> a Saturday off. That hasn't happened in years. <laughs> I don't, I couldn't tell you the last time I had a Saturday off. <laughs> I really couldn't. 
Um, but anyway, I'm just babbling for the sake of babbling at this point. So I am going to, and I realize I've been talking really fast today because my mouth is now super dry. <laughs> so I am going to relax with a little bit of TV and a little bit of knitting. And I will see you all again in a week or two. Have a great Easter, Pesach, Ramadan holiday weekend. Bye.